Welcome everybody to the Electric Supercar Channel. This week we are going to get the motors all positioned, ready to be mounted. Let's get to it. Next we have a word from our sponsor. So this is a water cooling circulation jacket. So essentially a cooling vest. I actually have a jacket that's a heated jacket, has a battery, it's got some electrical wire that actually heats it up. So like the heated jacket, this one will also need portable power. Got a little dust cover, which is nice. The vest comes with these packs. It's got like a granules or powder in there. You fill this up to about here with water and then you freeze the whole pack. There we go, we'll throw it in the freezer overnight. These are all frozen now. Now we're supposed to put about a liter of water in here. So the way the cooling vest works is it has a pump. That's why it needs the battery. And it circulates the fluid around that ice pack. And it's got lots of little water channels all over the vest. I turned off my AC for an afternoon, put on the vest, and did some work on the blue car, just to see how it'd work. I was really surprised at how cool it keeps your core. These vests are actually made for things like working in a shop, in a garage, or even on the farm. If you can't escape the heat, this would be a really great thing to have. This will be a multi-episode effort, but I need to figure out how to best mount motors as well as the battery pack. So for this guy, I actually took off the motor mounts there. I think I'm going to have to create my own. They just don't work very well for what I'm looking at. So I'm going to try and make a little jig to get this in the position I like, and then I can be able to kind of put it up and down um, in the car. All right, so there's seven bolts that really hold things together to the motor. Um, this one's got four, one, two, three, four. It's right here, one, two, three, four. And then on this side, there's one, two, three. And that's for that one, one, two, three. Those motor mounts um, look absolutely huge, but really um, there's just small threaded holes that hold it all together. I've got a frame here on the frame. So this will be able to support the uh, motor. Um, so basically I'm just gonna put some ratchet straps on top. That way I can kind of adjust the height a little more finely. But yeah, this is kind of sitting on some good mounts. So, and it's not going anywhere. All right, here's where we're to. I've got uh, the small motor, the front motor, that's ready to go. I was gonna try and lift it up. Um, it is incredibly tight and so um, I actually think it'd be easier to drop it from on top, but I don't have kind of one of those engine pickers. The, I've done this before. I'll just undo the front subframe and I'll kind of roll this forward to give me a little more room. And then uh, I'll put it in place and then put the front subframe back. I really should get an engine hoist, it would be easier. But now we got this great big opening and we're gonna go ahead and see if we can put this guy in the exact position we want. I took off the uh, front subframe and kind of pushed it forward just to give me a little more access. I put the motor on the floor there and then kind of lowered things down. I've got my little support rig here and then I'm gonna kind of hoist it up into place. So I've got this supported kind of in the left, right, and center. We'll see if we can lift this up, then I'm gonna get it off the uh, wooden frame. All right, I've been kind of hoisting the motor into position. It's kind of right there. And I put the uh, front subframe, kind of I lowered it and put it out of the way so I could kind of hoist up the motor. 
But now I need to put it back in place just to see kind of where it's going to be the best position for the motor relative to the hubs, make sure it doesn't interfere with anything else. As far as mounting holes and locations, so down there I've got two holes kind of on the frame rail on both sides. Um, it's going to be hard to see. So there's two holes right here as well. Pretty heavy duty mounting. There are four holes in the subframe. So right here there's a pin that, or a screw that goes down. So right there and right there, two other holes. So those are the mounting hole positions we've got to work with. Once we have a more firm idea on exactly where we want the motor, we'll design up some brackets or something to be able to mount the motor. All right, so you can see we're maybe two fingers away. That's about all we need. However, let's see if I can point you right to it. So that's the motor and it's running into the electric steering rack. So it needs to be kind of pushed that way just a little bit. Let's see if we can find some room. So I got a ratchet strap to kind of pull the motor back. Um, so basically it's kind of tilted a little bit forward, but now I've got clearance where I need it there. Um, next, I got to kind of see the height. So that red cap right there, that's where the shaft is, the output. And we just got to see kind of where that goes to this. If it's high, low, we want it to be pretty much in line. But to see about some clearance from some things. All right, I've got the motor, the front motor, I think about where I want it. Um, it's a little close on this side. It's actually close on both sides, but I got, I'm gonna call it three fingers. Um, so that'll work. The motor is kind of from where Tesla has it. It's pitched forward about 45 degrees. So again, it looks like we've got a lot of room here, but the steering column does come up here. So we've got to leave some room there. I'll show you from underneath, but one of the things that actually is really nice is the motor is centrally mounted meaning I can have equal length drive shafts. The Tesla actually does not have equal length drive shafts. The Tesla actually uses this one. So it's got two drive shafts that are same length, but then it has this one that actually extends one of them. All right, the other thing is, so here's the uh, floor of the car. And there you can see uh, the edge of the motor. So as we go up, So it's not the lowest part, which is good. We could probably drop it by another inch or so. It's getting pretty close. All right, here's what it looks like in the car. So again, you can see uh, we should be fine as far as the lower clearance. Um, it's actually good. I've got it centered perfectly kind of left to right. So the drive shaft to the left and the right will be the same length. So I think that's good because this, this wheel is kind of the lowest droop. So as long as uh, the drive shaft can come in and not interfere with any of this stuff, um, we should be good. So when the wheel's up, we should have plenty of room. All right, so to mount this, this has uh, four bolts on this side for the motor. And we actually have two right here that'll work out pretty well on the top frame rail. And then we gotta find some places underneath as well. This is my uh, rough drawing here. This is the actual frame rail that exists in the Porsche. So there's a frame rail. Again, this is kind of the front towards the front. This is back towards the firewall. And in the middle there is where we put the motor. Now the motor needs to mount somewhere. And I think the frame rail is going to be really good. It's actually got two mounting holes on top, one on the bottom. And <clears throat> my plan is to make something that looks like this. So it's going to have kind of like a C shape that can actually fit on the rail. That way the bolts don't need to do very much because so the weight of the motor is really just resting on this rail. So again, you're not really relying on bolts or anything. Similarly, because of the C shape on the rail, it's really just gonna be putting force um, on those surfaces, but really not on the bolts. So I think this will work really well. I want kind of a C shape. I need a, a, a longer plate like this, and then I'm gonna have some motor mounts um, I'm thinking, I haven't drawn this to scale, but this one I might wanna make quite a bit wider. Um, that way, again, all the loads are a little less. But I think that's my initial thought. I was looking at the scanned engine bay in CAD, and I also downloaded a large drive unit in CAD. And I think we might have a like an interference problem. So I made, 
a CAD board model. Huh, like that, CAD board. So this is roughly the same size. I realize it's not round, but uh, I've kind of marked the axle placement and things. And I'm gonna show you, I think, what some of the problems we have are. So the problem we have is there are two suspension components that kind of come down. They're also quite a bit inboard. Um, one is right here, the other one is right here. And there's just, I don't think there's gonna be enough room to fit the motor. So the axle wants to go in between those two. And so I'll show you with my CAD board where this fits. So that's as far forward as it goes because it hits the suspension right here. So boom, right here it hits the suspension. And the axle, it will not actually get to the wheel because the suspension kind of component is in the way. All right, so now I'm showing you the same thing from the other side. So again, this is looking towards the back of the car. So again, we can rotate the motor so it's sitting towards the back. So again, we hit the suspension right here. So right here, it hits the suspension. And again, the where the axle wants to come out is kind of too far, too far towards the rear. So this is what I'm trying to show you. We've got essentially the hub, the rear hub that's right there. And there's this suspension that comes down from the frame as well as this one. So again, the, the axle, it wants to go right in between there. The problem is if the motor comes up to here, it stops. If you go up, it's like, yeah, we can't quite get it there. And then similarly, if we go up here and the motor stops, we can't quite get it there. So we're going to find a way to kind of make all the suspension and the motor work and fit in the place. So I really thought the front motor would be the harder one to kind of get into place, figure out, but it looks like the rear motor is the one that we're going to have to do a lot of modifications. The front one seems like that'll fit okay. All right, I was trying to get the motor in position and the wheel came off of my bench. Um, at first I thought maybe I didn't get a strong enough caster, but the caster's fine. It's just uh, the screws pulled out of the wood. So we'll do some reinforcement before we continue. All right, we are under the Porsche. And I'm just trying to show you how tight things are. So um, the motor, I've actually got it uh, rotated so it's upside down. That way the uh, drive shaft here can be facing or a little closer to the rear. And basically I've got this back about as far as it can go. It starts hitting these, these mounts right here on both sides. But I really don't have anything in those positions right now. So if I wanted to, I could kind of shave those off um, and that way I could bring it further back. Let me show you um, through the axle what we're looking at. So from here, to the hub. So again, there's kind of this, this thing that kind of gets close to interference. I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so here we are at the rear tire. So you can see that support gets pretty close. Um, I think we might be okay, and especially if I'm able to shave those, um, I can probably bring it um, this direction, maybe another couple inches. So I think that can work. Um, it'd be preferable if it could be right side up and in the back but I think that's even more cramped. I don't think that'll work, but we'll, we'll take a look. All right, so I'm learning a couple things. Um, I rotated the motor so it was upside down. I thought that way I could still have it uh, run in the forward direction, but that doesn't work because there's kind of a vent plug on the top of the motor, and if you flip it over, it's on the bottom side, so all the gear fluid kind of leaks out. So that's really not an option. I'm finding that out as I am leaking gear fluid. Um, so I can run it in, I'll call it in reverse. So basically you just flip the motor left to right and then you have to program it essentially to go uh, forwards as backwards, backwards as forwards. So uh, you, you still have the same power delivery, everything like that, but it's just backwards. So with that being said, I'm gonna flip it around and look at things again. I think this is gonna work. Here's what it would look like if we could put the motor, I'll say facing the direction that Tesla has it. So again, the motor's kind of sticking behind and the gearbox and everything's in front. But this right here is the suspension and uh, basically it's hitting that and the, the shaft location. So you can't quite see it. And I'm like at a pretty steep angle. If we wanted to have it back here, 
I'd have to kind of redo the suspension. So that's not top on my list of things to do. So I think what we'll go for is I think we'll try and um, essentially flip it around. That way forwards will be backwards, backwards will be forwards. So uh, let me go ahead and flip this around and we'll see how it looks in reverse. All right, here we are in the back of the car. The motor has been like switched the other way. So normally this kind of gearbox transmission is in front of the motor. So that's the front of the car. We've got it flipped around so that this is now in the rear. And we're actually pretty close, pretty good on um, the axle alignment. So there's these uh, tabs that uh, used to hold something and they're just getting a little bit in the way. So I think if I shave off those tabs, I can kind of gain another inch. So there's it on the other side too. So I can gain another inch coming back. And I think that's kind of what I need because I want it as far back as I can. All right, there's the front of the car. There's the back wheel. So we're pretty good. And especially if I'm able to shave those, um, I can probably bring it um, this direction, maybe another couple inches. All right, everyone, that is gonna be it for this episode. It's gonna be a little bit shorter today. Um, the next is gonna be getting the motor mounts. So there's gonna be a lot of design and fabrication to get those motor mounts. But then essentially the motors will be mounted and that's kind of a major milestone. Um, if you guys remember, I kind of break this into trimesters and the first trimester is getting the motor mounted. Once you hit that, then you're in the second trimester. The second trimester is getting the motor moving. So after all the wires and cables and programming, everything's been done, that's second trimester. After you got that done, you're on the final stretch, third trimester. So anyway, that's gonna be it for this time. See you next time. I feel like you're not able to see. Are you able to see? Should try that again? Oh my gosh. Is it okay if I do the exit like this? I'm gonna clean up my face before I do the outro. God, is it like this for other shots?